，我。Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. Today we got some really cool stuff. We got a 408 LS Stroker, we've got Boost, and we've got an intake test. But before we get going, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, so you always get notified. In this video, we have the build up and dyno test of an ATK 408 Stroker short block. We originally built this motor up using their short block with forged internals. We added heads, cam, and intake, ran the motor, now then we added a Pro Charger D1SE with intercooler and added some boost. While we were there, we also performed an intake test to show the effect of changes in runner length, both naturally aspirated and supercharged. Why am I still talking? Let's get to the results. To illustrate the effect of a simple change in runner length, both naturally aspirated and boosted, obviously we needed a test motor, so we decided to use this 408 stroker supplied by the guys at ATK. Unfortunately, this was not my motor. It went to one of the editors because they always get the cool stuff. But I was allowed to do the testing on this, so it worked out very well. So this test motor was an ATK 408 stroker. It was actually a boost ready or blower combination and it started out with a six liter iron truck block and then they installed forged internals to make it obviously strong enough to withstand the rigors of boost. Now we know that the stock stuff will do that uh, well too, but this one all had, had forged internals. It had a stock crank, but forged manly rods and forged molly pistons. The pistons were 29cc dish pistons, meaning they were low compression, about eight, less than nine to one, 8.75 with the factory LS3 heads that we ran on this combination. The LS3 heads were upgraded with a dual spring kit from Brian Truly Racing. They also had comp cams, shaft rockers. Now the shaft rockers had the standard style LS rockers that you'd recognize, but they were just all connected by a common shaft. The important part of this was the camshaft, and that was a comp um, 54-470 cam. It was a 621-624 lift split a 235-251 degree duration split and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We also had, and that's what we're doing this test on, was the fast LSXR uh, intake manifold, the LS3 version that is adjustable. So they had different runners that you could take the lid off of and insert the different runner lengths. So you could go from long to medium to short. And this test will basically just show the long and the short and the medium would be right in between the two, as you might imagine. We had a fast 102 millimeter throttle body, inch and seven eighths long tube headers. And then this was all controlled by a Holly HP management system. So what we did was run this thing first, naturally aspirated, <laughs> and then did the intake comparison. And then we installed the, uh, Pro Charger D1SC Supercharger and ran it with the same pulley and air to water intercooler and then did the intake test again after we had dialed everything in with a supercharger. So run with those modifications, the low compression 408 boost rate stroker from ATK produced 549 horsepower at 6200 RPM, although it should be noted that at 6100 and 6300, it was within one horsepower. So it had this little horsepower plateau up at the top, but then fell off after that. After 6300, the power fell off, and that's a function of the long runner length. And the, and the, in addition to having an extra displacement of the 408 inch motor. So any given runner length on a bigger displacement motor will make peak power earlier. So this combination produced 527 foot pounds of torque. As you can see, it had a little bit of a, a, a almost a dual peak torque here, it made 522 down here at 4,300 RPM and made its peak out at 5,000 RPM. So here's what happened. We ran the motor with the long runner intake, took the lid off, and then replaced the long runner intake uh, runners, as you can see here in the photo, with the short runner, the red versions. So very short runner, big radius entry, and this also has the effect of 
changing the plenum volume, but in testing on the plenum volume, it really had no effect because we tried replacing the standard lid with the LSXRT lid using the same runner, and it showed no change in power. So the plenum volume didn't affect this very much, but it's important to note that it did change. And here's what happened when we installed the short runner length. Whoa! And you can see it made more power than the long runner past 6,300 RPM, but actually didn't make any more peak power, and we thought that this was odd, but it made 547 horsepower. Torque, peak torque was way down 493 foot-pounds of torque, and as you can see, it lost power to the long runner intake basically all the way up to the power peak, all the way up to... Oh, up to 6,300 RPM, the longer runner offered not just more power, but a lot more power. In in this case, um, 40 to 50 foot-pounds down here between 4,000 and 4,500 RPM. So that's a difference you would definitely feel on the street. And, and the long runner combination would be much better, even if you were running this thing out to 6,500 or even 7,000, because only above 63 or 6,400 RPM does the short runner make more power where the other one is falling off? But by then, the race actually would already be over. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we did this comparison under boost and see if the same thing happens. Now that we've taken a look at the comparison between the long runner and the short runner on our naturally aspirated 408 LS Stroker, we can see what happened when we added boost to the equation. First of all, we want to find out what the boost did to compared to our naturally aspirated motor. So here is our naturally aspirated 408 with the long runner fast manifold. Here's what happened when we added our Pro Charger D1SC, still with the long runners. This range from the boost down below 3,500 RPM was about three pounds and it rose to about 12 pounds at the power peak out at, or at the maximum RPM of 7,000 RPM. It produced uh, the power jump from 549 horsepower to 825 horsepower. And it's also important to note, and this is something that happens with centrifugal blowers as compared to turbos and other things, that it made peak power at a higher RPM. Before it was in the 62 to 6300 range, now it's in the 67 to 6800 RPM range. So it shifted it by quite a bit because you have a rising boost curve and it artificially increases where the thing wants to make peak power, which is good for the long runner combination because it artificially shifted that and allowed us to make more power at a higher engine speed. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the um, single or the short runner with boost and as you can see and what i'm going to do is go ahead and bring the short runner up on the na combination as well so you can kind of compare them i know that there's quite a bit going on there but you can tell the green and the blue are the na combinations and then the red the purple are the supercharged combinations as you can see the crossover point for the two of them was at 6300 or so that was the same both na and supercharged so the intake runner length is doing exactly the same thing, naturally aspirated and supercharged. We see that on the supercharged combination, the long runner manifold was making a lot more power below that point, all the way down to our startup of uh, 3,300 RPM. The short runner manifold made more power out at the top compared to the long runner at the very peak. Um, but only past 63 or 6400 RPM. And that's exactly what we would, we would expect of a short runner design. The intake manifold runner length is designed to be efficient in a given RPM range. And a lot of people get confused and think that boost changes that. But as we can see here, whether we had the long runner or the short runner, adding boost to it basically just did the same thing. The boost just multiplies or adds to what is there. And if you have a short runner manifold and you're making power, efficient power at a higher engine speed, and then you add boost to that, it's only going to continue under boost. Intake manifolds are RPM specific, whether it's NA or under boost. The other thing, as I mentioned, and we covered it a little bit, but it's, a, it's worth noting, especially on a centrifugal supercharger. Now on a turbo, where you're adding, if you have a good wastegate and you have good control, you're adding the same amount of boost all the way through the RPM range if you've sized your turbo properly. Basically, the curve is just going to mirror the NA curve. In this case, when we're adding a centrifugal supercharger, it doesn't exactly mirror the NA curve. And the reason for that is, as, as we said, 
you're increasing the amount of boost as the blower spins higher and higher. It's going to make more boost. It's got more airflow. So you're artificially making the engine combination more efficient with engine speed. So that's why we saw a big shift with four or 500 RPM shift and where the motor now made peak power. This is good stuff, but it shows intake manifolds RPM. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running the supercharger and the intake manifold on our 408 ATK LS stroker motor? Well, I think we learned three things. And the first thing is a 408 stroker makes quite a bit of power, even when it's saddled with fairly low compression. I don't normally drop the compression down into the eights when I do a supercharged or turbocharged motor, but it worked very well on this 408. We had enough camshaft in it, we had enough cylinder head on it, and we had enough intake manifold on it, especially with our adjustable intake manifold, that the 408 actually made pretty good power. The other thing I'd like to say about the low compression, although I don't always do that, it does add some safety margin when it comes time to tune the combination, especially on pump gas. The next thing we learned is adding boost to an LS motor always results in good things. Adding the intercooled Pro Charger, the D1SC, to this particular combination improved the power dramatically. In the case of the long runner manifold, it made 825 horsepower. And with the short runner one, it actually did a little bit better at 845 horsepower. And that's an important point. We also learned, and the third thing that I was going to get into is that we learned that intake runner length changes where the motor wants to make power and does that naturally aspirated and supercharged. But here's a little bonus thing, maybe the fourth thing that we learned here, and that's that when we ran this motor supercharged, it seemed to like the short runner manifold a little bit better, at least on the top. When we ran this thing NA, the short runner, the short runner manifold didn't really make any more power than the long runner manifold, even though it did a little bit better at the very top, but nothing in terms of peak power. When we added boost to the equation, that changed a little bit. I mean, the power actually picked up at the very top of the RPM range. Although the crossover was the same always, it did pick up a little power. That makes me wonder, is there really a boosted manifold? I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.